Hello, hello everybody. All right, welcome back to the channel. This time I want to talk to you about something that it has been around for a couple of months now, but it was just a couple of days ago when I found out. And I want to talk to you about this guy over here. This is a level, right? But now in Unreal Engine 5, you should already know that you can drag a level and drop it into your level and you can nest levels, right? Levels inside levels, right? This is what is called the actor level instance, right? And this is very cool because it works like a prefab and you can construct stuff and then you can reuse it. And because there are instances, if you change any of them, they will all change the same, which is good. And at the same time, I believe is not so good because it is not great in terms of um, creating organic looks because everything is going to look the same. If you want to create things like, I don't know, columns and building facades and stuff like that, it's going to be fine. But, you know, if you get a bunch of frogs with the same organization everywhere around, it's going to be very noticeable, right? If only there was a way to actually create something all right, look at that, it's almost the same. It has the same amounts of stuff in, but it looks different. And if you move it around, you're gonna get a different iteration of that same arrangement, right? But just a little tad different every time around. And this is great because in this case, you are gonna be able to create something that is limit, right? You have some limits into it, um, you must have, you know, these same basic actors, right? And then you can choose, you know, to actually move them around, rotate them and have, you know, different instances out of them. So how to create this? This is really fun. It is really, really amazing how this um, is thought. And I don't know how many of you already knows about this. So first of all, the actual hero here is this dude right here that is the PCG settings. And uh, if you actually go and search in PCG, you're not going to find how to create one of those. And that's weird, right? The way that you create one of those is by right clicking on any level, right? And if you right click on a level, you are going to be able to go to scripted asset actions. And here you're going to find PCG level to PCG settings, right? And if you click here, you're going to get one of these. And um, this is not so much exciting because if you open it up, there's nothing here that you can actually change to make a difference anywhere. This is just like a middle, middle man, right? That you need to actually have to actually include one of these, a, a level inside your PCG, right? So once you have this setting here, you are going to be able to do some magic inside your PCG network. If you drag it and drop it just like this, you're going to get uh, either an instance or a copy. I'm using instances just because, right? And you're going to get one of these. And this is really exciting because now you can copy those points, right? Um, the original locations of everything that is inside that level and you can actually distribute it um, inside a PCG network. And um, if you want to have like a good explanation of everything that is happening here, I'm going to just go ahead and go about it. Um, if you want to save the time, I'm going to be um, setting up a copy of this PCG somewhere in the internet that is going to be in the description of this video. So you can simply go there and, you know, get it. If you're lazy enough, get it and use it. All right, here we go. All right, so we're going to start with this dude right here. This dude on its own, it doesn't show anything. It, it won't even um, have any sort. Let's go ahead and grab this dude right here. And I'm going to turn it off by hitting E, right? And let's start checking out what is happening here. Um, let me put these just a tad bigger so we can actually look what is happening here. This is good. So this dude right here, if I debug it, nothing is going to happen, right? This is just, again, a middleman. It's just a node that will grab this original position of everything 
uh, it's going to set up some points. These points, for some reason, you cannot debug them. Instead of actually debugging these dude right here, we're going to do it with these control uh, copy points right down here, right? So I have connected these copy points, all right, um, to uh, create point create node. And what these will do, I just took one of these and manage it to actually produce only one sample in the in the exact middle, right? This is the only thing that this is doing. This is getting like one big sample right at the center of the actual PCG volume. Let me turn this one off. And I'm going to grab this transform point and turn it off just for now because I want you to actually check out what is happening here, right? With these test PCG uh, settings, right? And let me debug this one. And this is what you get. You get exactly this. You're going to get like one point, right? With the boundaries of the actual size of whatever is in this level instance, but inside an actual PCG. What is great about this, let me keep on going, you know, turning off a couple of these uh, so you get uh, the actual surprise at the end. And that happens when you get this static mesh spawner. The only different thing that you need to actually change into the static mesh spawner for these to actually pop out, you know, exactly what you had in the beginning is that you need to change, you go to the mesh selector and you change this mesh select, uh, selector for uh, this one that is called PCG mesh, mesh selector by attribute. And in the attribute name, you change that, you change that to mesh, right? And that's it. Um, if I turn this one on, back on, and I turn off the actual debugging of the copy points, you're going to see that we get an actual copy of whatever we had in the actual level instance, right? So this is all fine and dandy, but we are, you know, at the mercy of the same thing, right? But remember, those are just points and we can do with those points whatever we want, right? So, for example, one thing that you can actually do is to add uh, transform points, right? After you copy those points and you get the exact same, you know, distribution as you had before, um, what you can do is actually add a little bit of a transform point to it. And let me show you what that will do. And that's it. Now, every time you move it around, it's going to have like a randomized position to whatever you have in your level instance, right? This is something that you cannot do uh, with a single um, level instance. You need to actually um, copy those points, right? And again, remember, I'm using this create uh, point grid to just create like one single point in the center of the actual PCG. And then that is you know, copy as the actual target and the source, you know, the original um, distribution that you have here is going to appear there, right? Uh, but then I was thinking, what else we can do with this? And I thought, right, um, about doing these. There is, there is an actual self pruning. And what these will do is actually find things that are colliding or over each other, points that are redundant, and it's going to simply choose randomly to remove one. So that gave me the idea of saying, all right, what if, and you are going to notice something right now that we are this, this near to the actual um, level instance, these actors are uh, repeated. In fact, let me get in. I'm going to hit Control E, and you're going to see that... Um, there are overlapping, right? I have a bunch of rocks that are overlapping that they're all sharing the same transform, right? Um, not the same transform. They have the same information in their transforms, right? They're in the exact same place. And what you can do with that is actually uh, tell the PCG to, when you find things that are living in the exact same point, get rid of all the copies and just leave one. And that one is going to be randomized every time. So what this is very cool is that you can actually um, uh, make all these rocks not to, you know, appear in different places, but actually choose only one rock from this actual group. So let me show you how that is done. So first, I had to actually run a bounce modifier, and that, that was to actually set a normalized size to all the samples, because as you saw at the beginning, if you actually check the copy points, um, 
you can see that the actual boundary will have the exact same size of the original asset, right? And we want to get rid of that because we need to know, even if the, if the things are different size, different scale, we want them to actually have like a normalized boundary, right? Let me show you how that looks. So instead of looking like this, I want them to be, and again, let me turn this off just to make this very easily. Um, I'm going to turn this one on and actually take a look at this. And this is what I got. You can see that each and every one of these boundaries are now normalized. They are now this exact same size. What is really good about these is now the ones that are overlapping, you can self-prune. Um, when you do this, you're going to get rid of copies, right? And it's going to randomize uh, the one that stays. And what this makes is exactly this. I'm going to turn this on and it's going to look exactly the same because this, the thing is that we got rid of everything that was duplicated or triplicated in this case. And now what you get is this. Um, from all these overlapping rocks, I'm always getting only one version of it, right? And if I get this and move it around, a new uh, random rock is going to be utilized. Not only um, these actual transform points will rotate them and move them and scale them just a little tad. But you can see that I have two different, um, you're going to see that at some point, these are two different um, plants, right? Uh, or little trees. Um, and at some point, if you keep on playing with these, um, one of those, it's going to appear, the other one. Um, the same is going to happen, then random things. The same thing is going to happen with these um, little um, floor shape, right? I have a couple of those there. I have actually three of those, and this is the other one. So if you keep moving, oh, there it is. There is the other plant and the other floor and different rocks. So not only I have different positions of everything that was, you know, originally pretty static right here, um, I can not only move them around, but actually choose a different one every time that I, that I need to, right? So, yeah, ah, that's it. That was what I wanted to show. Now, one last thing is that you're going to find out that if I keep on creating duplicates, duplicates of these, um, they are all, you know, the same orientation and size. So if you want to change that, you can actually add this transform point to the actual single point that I'm creating at the center of this grid. So if I turn this on, look what we get. Now we get them rotated around 360 degrees and I have them different sizes. So now it's even more better disguise, right? Now they can be the whole thing, right? The, the whole group, right? Uh, because this one right here is going to do it on an individual, right? So this one is going to grab this point and rotate it, make it bigger, smaller, right? Um, this one is going to get the whole thing, right? And make it big or small or rotate it right or left, right? That is what we want. And, right, that's it. And let me show you how uh, cool this is, right? So now I have only one of these, right? I'm going to get rid of the actual... Um, original, oh, um, yeah, the original, um, these here, or let's move it right there because I might have one last thing to actually talk about that one. So let me get these, and instead of connecting it to a central point, I'm going to actually create a surface sample out of this, right? Let me um, remove this one and actually connect this one there. And now you can see that I have a bunch of those. If I want them to look a little bit better, what I'm going to do is actually uh, close everything and actually turn off my instance uh, foliage. And that uh, there you can see each and every one of these samples are completely different. They have different pieces and all of those pieces are rotated differently. And uh, the whole thing is going to be rotated and scaled differently. And that's it. With only one um, level instance, you can create infinite amount of variations. And yeah. Now, you will say, what if I want, you know, to make a little bit of a change? Well, let me take a look where our original um, 
level instance is, is this right here, right? So what I can do is, all right, let's say I want now, I don't know, a tree, right? Something different. I can open it up, right? I can go and actually search for a tree and I need it to be an actual uh, static mesh. And I'm going to grab, you know, these, um, these three right here. And I'm going to put it somewhere around there, right? And it's going to, and this one will only change rotation and location, right? Because there is only one of those and, and nothing is overlapping with it. Um, it's going to always be there, right? So we're not given um, the PCG a chance to actually change this tree for another thing. So it's going to be present everywhere, right? So that's it. I'm going to actually, you know, um, escape, escape, uh, save the changes on my level instance, right? And the thing that I just need to do is let's go back to where we were right here, right? And let's save everything because this is where everything can go to the docs. And you right click on your test PCG, sorry, you right click on your um, level instance or level, right? Level asset. And you run again the PCG uh, level to PCG settings. And that's it. Now these PCG settings was overridden, but you cannot see the actual thing changing here. And that is because it has not regenerated, right? So you can simply move it just a tad. And now you have those trees everywhere. And it's that easy. If you want that thing gone, you go here, you control E, you grab your tree, you remove it, escape, escape, sorry, escape and save. And now you regenerate your um, settings, right? You right click there, you go to your scripted assets and you run it again. And the next time you refresh your PCG, it's going to be gone. And this is, this is, um, this is amazing, right? Um, let me show you one last thing. I added this uh, projection node because this not only works on a plane, like that was one of the actual big issues with this. If you grab these and try to actually, you know, match it with a rotating, let me get rid of this older PCG, those rocks. And let me grab this and, uh, come on. Let's move it around here. That's it. The thing follows around um, the landscape. Not only the full copy, but things inside the actual copy. All these different rocks are being projected, right? So where these will actually fail, because yeah, you make these to only work on a plane, right? Um, and this is, you know, this is only going to work where this thing is completely flat, right? Um, the actual PCG will grab each and every one of those individually and project it down into the surface. So I think this really uh, completes the actual um, level instance. The level instance was cool, but now this makes it so much cooler. Now you can actually create very reactive and very organic uh, prefabs. And you control what is inside those things and a little bit of the actual composition of them, but you will give, you know, the actual PCG, um, you know, all the options to actually create an infinite, and I tell you this, you know, with a full uh, capitalized world, word, an infinite um, iterations of your creation. All right, so that's it. And without no more to say, I will say I love you all. Be good to each other and I will check you on the next one.